Greetings and blessings to all of you. We greet you in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus the Christ, our King and our Lord. We are grateful that we have gathered again here in the house of our God, and we thank God for this another opportunity. Christian friends, you are experiencing the New Hope First Baptist Church virtual worship emanating from 705 Nelson Street here in the city of Greenville, Mississippi. I pray that while you are here with us that you will share this worship experience with a friend and with a loved one that they too may be blessed in the things of our great God. While you're with us today, I pray that you will share in your giving and utilize our various means of online giving through our various platforms, Giveify, and other platforms that we have uh, that are posted uh, on our page. And this too will help us tell our story as we reach uh, for Christ and as we reach others for Christ and as we draw closer to the Lord and closer to each other. The Lord is in his holy temple that all the earth keeps silent before him. I would that you would join with us as we sing our opening song, I am thine, O Lord.
losses, and I am sure you will agree with me that we all need to draw closer and nearer to the Lord. Amen. In these last and evil days, amen, we need to draw closer to the Lord and closer to each other. Amen. Love should abound in the house of our God. Amen. The world needs to see what love is all about. And first of all, we must exhibit love in the house of the Lord. I want to invite your attention to the book of Matthew, Matthew's gospel, the fourth uh, chapter, Matthew's Gospel, the fourth chapter. If you would please turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, uh, the fourth chapter. And when you have reached that, you will find these words recorded in the Word of our God. Uh, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was and afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into this holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taking him up into an exceeding high mountain, and show of him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And then Satan then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. So reads the word of our God. Shall we have a prayer? O oh Lord God, you the one true God, the only wise God. Pure your people have assembled in your holy house this morning. And Lord God, as we come, we come to worship you and only you. As we come this morning, Father, we are thankful to you for watching over us last night, protecting us through the night while danger was all around. And then, oh Lord God, at the right time, not too early, not too late, your hands of love touched us and our eyes came open to see this beautiful day, a day that's been coming ever since the beginning of time. We thank you, oh Lord God, to be alive this morning to see this day. And as we come, Heavenly Master, we want to thank you for your darling Son, Jesus the Christ, and the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord God, we are here at the last day of this tenth month of this year. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done for us throughout this month. Lord God, we don't know what danger we may have been in, but you kept your arms of protection around us. Lord God, we thank you 
for your provisions that you blessed us with throughout this month. And Lord God, we'll look back on this month and just be thankful to you for all you have done. Father, we pray now for those that are on sick beds this morning. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. And then, Father, we pray for America this morning. Heavenly Father, I don't know where we're going here in this country, but Lord God, I know if we don't change our direction, your wrath is coming upon America this morning. Because, Father, we have, this country have turned its back on you. The country that said one time we wanted to be one nation under you. The country that said they would put their trust in you. But, Lord God, they are trusting everybody but the one true God. But, oh, Lord God, I'm so thankful a few of your people are still holding on to your unchanging hand. We're not looking at Washington, D.C. We're not looking at the state capitol. We're not looking at City Hall. But, oh, Lord God, we're looking to the hills because we know all our help comes from the hills. Heavenly Master, as we come this morning, we're just thankful to you, Lord God, that we have a knowledge of you and a life in you, Heavenly Master. Father God, we pray now for this service, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord God, that your spirit would fill this sanctuary because after all, Heavenly Master, this is your house. We pray that you will bless the message and bless the messenger. We ask your blessing now on the pastor and his family and on each and every member in, in, of this congregation and their families. And Lord God, as we continue to go through this day, we will give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, I pray that we, as the new church, will be like Israel was when they come to when they was coming to your house. They came rejoicing. Every, they didn't come for three days, like three times a year. But those three times, Father, where they would come rejoicing. And my prayer is, Father God, when your people get ready to come into this sanctuary, they would come rejoicing, Lord God, knowing that they're coming into this house to meet you, where your presence dwells. Because we know your presence dwells in this house. And Lord God, we pray your, that your spirit will go from heart to heart just throughout this sanctuary this morning. Thank you now, Father. Thank you now, Father. We're going to give you all the praise and all the glory. And Lord God, when we leave here, when this service is over, we're going to leave looking back when we can come back again, Lord God. Thank you now, Father. It's in your son Jesus Christ's precious name that this church pray all of these prayers. Let the church now say amen. Thank you. Heartfelt prayer. I would that you would join with me in singing the old for me. I'm on the battlefield. Let us stand.
yourself but on for your love for the Lord. Amen. 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 All right, my sister, come on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to New Hope First Baptist Church. Pastor Kimball. Hope us, guests, and friends. Greetings. Give an honor to God, who is the author and finisher of all things holy. Pastor Kimber and the New Hopers, welcome and thank you for joining us for another morning of praise and thanksgiving to our living God. Amen? Amen. Welcome, one and all. First Chronicles 2330. And to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at evening. Amen? Amen? Praise ye the Lord. He is an abundance of goodness, love, grace, and a desire to bring his people to a place of spiritual peace. Amen? Amen. So praise ye the Lord. To our guests and church family, may you be blessed May you be so blessed by today's inspiring message that I know Pastor Kimball is bringing to us that you will petition the Holy Spirit to continue to guide your heart to always be in worship service at New Hope First Baptist Church where our doors are open and we welcome you to join us as well as open doors to open hearts. Amen? Amen. Inviting you and all of us to come in, join in, any Sunday of your choosing. We're here every Sunday, amen? amen? And be a part of all that we do here at New Hope First Baptist Church in service to our God, amen? amen. So again, to our guests in sanctuary, live streaming, and viewing our services live by way of your personal devices, we thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will send us an email if you have expressions of anything that you saw or heard at this service, and you can send it to us at nhfbc1895 at gmail.com. Kindly send us an email. Amen? Amen? So again, welcome, and let's all remember, our God is in abundance of goodness. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Our thought for today is, every day is a gift. That's why it's called the present. This is somebody else's thought. I'm just going to add my spin to it. Amen? Amen? Deuteronomy 30 and 19. 
I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Amen? Every day is a gift. How we value the time God gives us allows us to, to learn to live with purpose or to allow the distractions of the world to distract us, causing us to lose sight of the gift of opportunity and the value of it. Amen? Each day is a gift from God. It's a present of guidance for our daily lives. So choose life. Start and submit each day in the Lord. Submit to him and follow his direction. Thank God for his gift of a brand new day. Be satisfied. Start your day in prayer for another day, another chance to fulfill a life of purpose in the present. Every day is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Amen? Again, choose life. Meditate on what God sets before you. Open the gift of waking up to a new day. Start with praise and be happy and thankful. It's a gift that comes from God. That's why it's called the present. Amen? read. Amen. Maybe we will uh, be more thankful when our eyes open up in the morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the present. Amen. And uh, I'll wait to unwrap it and see what the Lord is going to do that day. Amen. Amen. We greet you once again. We're thankful for this another uh, opportunity. Uh, we uh, solicit your prayers on the behalf of our entire uh, membership and those that are on uh, our sick list. And uh, I want you to particularly focus upon uh, these two uh, that are recently added to our prayer journal. Amen. Hopefully you have a prayer journal. You have persons that you pray for on an ongoing basis. I, I, I hope that you have your church family in your prayer life and your, and your pastor in your, amen, in your prayer life because I desperately need your prayers always. Amen. Anybody that does not accept Prayer does not understand what prayer does. Amen. Amen. When you ask someone to pray for you, that is a, not a sign that you're weak. That's a sign that you've got good sense. Why don't you say amen? Amen. That's a sign that you have good sense. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much and I have seen what prayer can do have you seen it I said I have seen what prayer can do prayer will open some doors that are closed in your face prayer will lift you when you are burdened prayer will Heal those that are sick. Amen. 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 Prayer will get you off, off heels and get you in some wheels. Why don't you say amen? amen. Hey, even if you credit bad, the Lord still will make a way for you. Amen. Amen. So prayer, prayer changes things. I want you to uh, lift up Dondrea Brown. I mentioned him. 
some time ago. This is my granddaughter's father, amen. And he was uh, uh, put in surgery the other day and uh, it, it did not go well. And he had a negative uh, reaction, amen. And uh, it's very, very serious and I need you to lift him up. Amen. 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 I, uh, we were walking the other day, and I looked on my phone, and here this is. Amen. And uh, I tell you, you know, you just, you, you, once you get, get over one thing, yeah, yeah, something else, something else. So the Bible says for us to pray without ceasing. Amen. It must be an ongoing situation. And then I want you to lift up uh, Jasmine uh, Towns and then the town's daughter uh, who is hospitalized in Jackson. And she needs our prayers. I prayed with her on the phone and uh, she was very appreciative of that as well as her mother. And that's just what we do. Amen. 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 We do what we do. Amen. Amen. Because it's the right thing to do. Amen. Amen. So let's lift her up. She's a young lady and a young mother. And the children need their mother. And the mother loves her children. Amen. Why don't you say amen? amen? So we just need to lift them up in prayer. Amen. And then let's pray for our nation. Amen. amen. Our nation is in need of prayer. People are so confused until they don't know to go left or to go right. And only the good Lord is the one that can lead them through the darkness. Amen. And pray for our president. Amen. I said the same thing even when Trump was president. I said, pray for our president. He, he is our president. Amen. And he needs our, our prayers. And people that work with him need prayer too. Amen. Because they are blind by uh, some light and are not really following the spirit. Amen. And we are told that we are to lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. What should I do, Lord? Should I do this? Should I do that? What should I do? Amen. And the Lord will give us direction. Is that right? Amen. Come on, precious. Come on.
you for your gifts. Thank you for your sharing on today. Amen. I have some news for you, uh, the church and membership. Uh, very shortly, uh, a group of us committee uh, will be designated to uh, resign uh, the uh, note at the bank to renew the note for our renovation. And uh, this will be the last go around. And within the next five years, we will be uh, debt free. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I have decided uh, prayerfully that the Lord has instructed me not to ask for any additional funds as a capital drive to pay it off any earlier. He says, just ride it out to the end. Okay. Amen. Yeah. And at that time, we would, would have paid off our van uh, and the uh, renovation as well. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So everybody ought to feel good about that. Amen. Amen. So I just thought that you needed to know that. Amen. 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 Every so often we have to renew it. And it's going to renew with a lower interest rate and the payment will be lower as well. Amen. Amen. That sounds good, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. So I just want you to be aware of that. I thought I had put my message together the other day, and after I had done what I had done, and the Lord said, I ain't give you that message. Oh, no. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's not the message, so amen. One thing about it, you sure can't get ahead of the Lord. <laughs> you can try, but you, and you ain't going to make it. So he gave me another message, amen, oh, yeah. which is the message that he assigned for today. Right. Why don't you say amen? amen. Isn't, it, isn't it good to hear from the Lord? Yes, yes, amen. It doesn't mean that uh, he won't allow me to preach that message. He just ain't going to let me do it today. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Is it, I mean, I studied it, Sister Washington. I studied it. I read it. I prayed over it, you know. I, I still have the notes. But he'll, when the right time is, he'll say, all right, I'll let you do that one. Amen. 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 Now, I want you to turn with me to the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter, uh, starting at verse 12. Isaiah, the 14th chapter, starting at verse 12. And you'll find these words. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high. Amen. I want to talk about the danger of having a jealous spirit. The danger of having a jealous spirit. We live in a world that is highly competitive. Uh, just look at how competitive Jackson State against Valley State, how competitive that can be. 
we compete for jobs. We have the battle of the bands, spelling bee, politics, cheerleader competition. Uh, rivalry between high school and collegiate sports. This causes an enormous amount of envy and jealousy. But jealousy and envy are not the same. Jealousy and envy are not the same. Jealousy means an unpleasant suspicious or uh, apprehension of rivalry or rivalship, whereas envy is most often used to refer to a covetous feeling toward another person's attitudes, toward another person's possessions, or status that they may possess. Jealousy appears when there is a threat that comes from a third party to take the place of somebody else. Let me explain it. You see, a man or a woman can be jealous of their spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend when it appears that a third party is trying to move in and replace them. Did you get that? Yeah, this is a third party situation that creates jealousy because there is an idea of a threat. And the threat comes in that you want to proceed that the third party has some type of advantage that you do not have. For example, if it's a man uh, and uh, let's say uh, they are jealous of their wife or girlfriend of a third party, it could be a man that they feel is a threat. Well, there's a perception. You may feel that this person has a higher status, or maybe they got more money than you have. They ride better. They live better. They are handsome. So this becomes a threat when you perceive that they have an advantage over what you do not have. Jealousy always involves three people. There is a pyramid, uh, a triangle, so to speak, whereas envy takes only two. Satan is the Bible's number one example of jealousy. Satan is the number one example of jealousy. We first run into jealousy uh, in the Bible when it comes to two brothers, uh, Abel and Cain, which leads to murder. Now, it's no question that among us as a race, we kill one another like we kill flies. I said, we kill one another like we kill flies. And the motivating factor is jealousy. Could be about a woman, could be about some finance, or, but it's perception. It's all about perception. But jealousy is the motivating factor. Satan is the number one example of 
jealousy. Now, his number one uh, motivator that really led to his downfall was P R I D E. Pride. There's a scripture uh, found uh, in, in, in Proverbs 16, 18, that said that pride goeth before fall. You see, so pride leads to a fall. So now, when we look at, at pride, uh, let's spell it out. Now, when we look at the I wills of Satan, I want you to put in your mind a ladder or steps. 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 See, you when you 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 are not subject to fall just on level. You're subject to fall as you climb. You see, it, you, you know, at my house, I have stairs, and, uh, if, and I have rails. But now, if, if going, the climbing is the most dangerous part of going up. That's the danger. Because as you go up, you, you run into the possibility of falling. Okay. Let's spell it out. Uh, pride. The number number one, the Satan was interested in position. P, position. Everybody said position. One of the number one rivalries in the church is position. Did y'all get that one? Yeah, po, 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 position is the number one fight in the church over position. Uh, I once gave a title to an individual in the church. There was no money involved. There was no finance involved. There was no salary involved. But the person caught hell because I gave them a title. Do you hear me? And he said, Reverend, just take it back, Reverend. I'm, I, it ain't worth it. Position, position, because in your mind, in the person's mind, it makes them feel important because of the position. Now, a lot of time, when people get in position, they can't function in the position. They can't do nothing with it, but they just want the position. P, the second, the second step, R, is rule. Rule. You know, that Satan wanted to be in position so he could rule. Cause, because he was the anointed cherub, he was actually over the music ministry in the choir. You see. Which, which is uh, one of the most volatile uh, ministries in the church. It is the most, not just the black church, white church too. It is the most volatile uh, uh, ministry in the church to manage. Why? Because that ministry meets more than any other ministry based on frequency. The more you meet, the more opportunities you have to start some mess. It's based upon frequency, you see. Ministries that do not meet as often have less time to interact with others, to carry gossip and this and that and all that. So it is less of a problem to manage. Rule. The next letter, I is idolatry. Idolatry gives on the idea of being uh, in the position to be worshipped. 
Uh, because Satan wants to be like God, he wants to be worshipped. Yeah, fall down and worship me. And I'll give you all of this. Worship. Yeah, and, and, and D, a dazzling. <laughs> to be shining to, so that people will look and take notice of who you are. You know, uh, uh, that's why some people cannot stand for the light to shine on anybody else but them. It do, don't want the light to shine on. Why you? Why? 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 So and so always up. Why so and so always got to be the person? Got to be the chairman. This and that. She was the chairman last time. The light is shining too much on that individual, dazzling. And then that is E, equality. Equality, that is, Satan wanted to be equal with God. Look at what the five I will. He said, I will be as God. I will possess God's glory. Number three, I will have all in subjection to me. In other words, he wants to have individuals that are under his control. That's why Satan can't stand to be by himself. He wants some disciples. I will exercise authority and I will occupy heaven. In other words, he wanted to be God. This is what led to his fall. Now the spirit of jealousy always feeds on anger and being argumentative, backbiting, be belittling somebody, bickering. Backhanded compliment. That show is a nice dress, but it sure don't look good on you. What, 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 what kind of compliment is that? It, you know, it's a, it's it's a it's a it's a negative way. It's a, it's jealousy. Yes. Competitiveness. We should not be competitive in the house of God, but we should be striving and working together. Yeah, you have competitiveness among musicians, you know, trying to outplay, you know, one another, or outsing one another, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Not just in black church, white, white church too. Same, same, same thing, because the spirit is, is everywhere. It's a, it's a spirit. Let me tell you, it's a spirit. It's not a person. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that is out to bring in division. Everybody say division. Yeah, it's a spirit that's out to bring in division. And then there is covetousness. You see, jealousy creates a, uh, uh, an air of covetousness. In other words, I want what you have. Rather than knowing that God blesses, blesses who he wants to bless. But he may not bless me in the same manner that he blesses you. But still, God loves me, he loves you, and he will bless us according to uh, his will and according to to his time. You see. God, if God blessed all of us the same way, it, it'll be a terrible world. If he blessed us all the same way and in the same manner, but God is the one who dispensed the blessings. And you and I, we do, we do not, you don't have to be uh, been all out of shape when the Lord starts blessing your next door neighbor. 
Yeah, this jealousy leads to a person becoming a kleptomaniac. Theft, violence, and hatred toward other people. You see, jealousy can cause you to hate somebody. You don't even know why you hate them. You don't even, under, you don't even know why. But now, when we look at the blessings of God, we will readily find uh, that God is no respecter of person. Your time will come. Why don't you say amen? amen? Your time will come. If you're faithful to the Lord, your time will come. You don't really have to worry about when they're going to promote me. When I'm going to step up. But you know what? Just because you step up in money and finance does not mean you're going to really advance. There are a lot of people that make far more money than you do, but, but they, it's not what you get, but what you do with what you're getting. You know, I was telling my son the other day, if you make $100,000 and you spend $100,000, what you got? So it's not in what you what you get it, it's what you do with what you're getting. And God uh, will not advance uh, us when we are not faithful with what He has given us. You know, why why would He give you why would He give you a Bentley or a Rolls Royce and, and you you don't even want nobody to ride in your Volkswagen? You won't even take your next door neighbor uptown if they you don't even want them in your car. So why would the Lord uh, give you something that's gonna bring you further away from him? So it's all about our what? Attitude. It's about our attitude in terms of how we uh, handle material blessings. Yeah. Well, what are you going to give you? A brand new, big old house, and, uh, and, and yeah, you won't have come to church with the little one you got. You won't, you won't have read the Bible, you won't have pray, when, well, and, 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 you, and he going to give you something far bigger? I don't think so. But there are three, three keys to overcoming a jealous spirit, and I'm out of here. Number one, you've got to separate yourself from the environment that triggers a jealous spirit. If you're around jealous people, you're going to take on that same spirit and attitude. You know, the folk that don't want nobody to have nothing, they ain't going nowhere, and they don't want you to go nowhere. You see. So you have to distance yourself from the environment that feeds on Jealousy. Even Jesus had to deal with jealousy. The Pharisees couldn't stand him because the people stopped coming to the temple and they were out there on the hills listening to the Lord. And they didn't like that. He was feeding them. He made them feel like they were somebody. They were poor, especially the women. You see, in Jewish time, women did not have the privilege of being taught the law of the Bible. They didn't, they, that, was on, that was a man thing. That was a male thing. When Jesus came along, he made them feel as though the kingdom was, was also available to them. And they opened up their resources and they helped finance the, the Jesus ministry and they helped move the kingdom of God because Jesus included them on his agenda. Why don't you say amen? amen? Matter of fact, if it had not been for the women that were really following the Lord, I don't know where the kingdom would have gotten. When you find in the Bible 
uh, at the death of Jesus, the disciples, they have, in, they have uh, uh, gone into seclusion. And only somebody that's concerned about Jesus having a proper burial with some pitiful little women that got up early in the morning trying to get their child. Who's going to move the stone away? I, I don't know, child, but we got to get there. Let's, let's, let's get there. Let's, I don't, I just, let's just pray that they don't nobody rob us while we're out here. So Jesus included them on his agenda. And the Pharisees couldn't stand it because their bank account was dwindling down to nothing. And their prestige that they thought they had was fading away. And they said it's best that one man would die for the nation than the whole nation perish. Even the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they opposed one another. One believed in the resurrection and angels, the other one did not. But they came together even with the Herodians because they had a plan yeah. to get rid of Jesus. Right. Why don't you say amen? amen. Jealousy leads to murder, and yes, that's what does. killed yes, Jesus. Does. Yes, it does. Yeah, but you do, do you know the number one thing that killed him is the resurrection of, 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 of Lazarus. When Jesus tarried, showed up the fourth day, and called Lazarus from the grave, his name was in the paper. He's dead. His obituary was in the paper. They've had the funeral. The sermon had been preached. The tombstone had been put there. He's dead. And he showed up. And they said, if you had a been here, this he wouldn't have died. I thought you was our friend. Every other time we called on you showed up. But what, what why why you been so late showing up? It's too late now. We, and Jesus said, You're gonna see your brother again. And yeah, I know I'm gonna see him again in the resurrection. But I hear I hear the Lord. Pardon to himself, I am, I am the resurrection. Why don't you say amen? amen? But it was that miracle, that miracle, that miracle that Jesus performed that rose up in the mind of Pharisees and Sadducees. And when he came forth, They said, this man must die. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jealous. They were jealous. Yes, yes. That caused our Lord to come, his life to come to an end. But, but Jesus knew all of that. Yes, Separate yourself from the environment. Yes. The second thing uh, uh, that you need to realize, to be aware of our need to be thankful of God's blessing on somebody else's life. That's right, that's right. We ought to be glad, Brother Howell, when our brother that we saw walking to the show is now riding in an automobile. We ought to rejoice. That's right. That's right. We ought to be glad about it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We ought to be glad about it that they're doing better. That's right. Romans 12, 15 says, Rejoice with them who rejoice and weep with them who weep. That's right. That's right. In other words, uh, we ought to all be happy Amen. when our brother and our sister start climbing up. You, you know, this is what, this what gets me. Mm. This is what gets me. You know, you, uh, is a, a young lady that does my taxes, you know, she and I sometimes, we get into a deep conversation. And she, for some reason, she got off in this, you know, and uh, she's she, uh, very knowledgeable. And uh, this pandemic has exposed a whole lot of hypocrisy. Do you hear me? It's a whole lot of money that has been uh, pumped into our local communities. 
that is supposed to help the people in the community. You see, when you're on a job, they got something called hazard pay. And she said, say, Robert, the county got so much money they don't know what to do with it. She said, every person that's working should get and can get up to $25,000 a piece that's on top of their salary. But they won't give it because they just want certain folk to have the money. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? But the money is there. They got it. But they won't dispense it because they want to, want to give it to their buddies. So since they can't give it just to their buddies, they don't give it to nobody. It just sit there. But there again, it goes all the way back to jealousy. Here's a white man. Here's a black man. All right, both of them uh, are equally qualified, but you know, and I'm black, but I would rather give the job to Mr. Charlie than give it to you because I don't want you to rise. And this man here, he, he's a multi-millionaire. Oh, he, he, oh, he already... And, you, and this guy here, he driving an old rag to pick up truck. He got to raid the hood and, and shake the cable to get it to start. But you like that. You okay with that. And this man over here, he's got a fleet of automobiles and trucks. But you, you okay with just, you know, giving him some, some, giving him some more money. Yeah, again, it's, it's jealous. Number three, I know y'all wasn't looking for this today. Get your flesh under subjection. See, it's a, fle it's a flesh thing, see, because you're not being led by the spirit. You're being led uh, by the flesh. You see, you, you know, if you got two people uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, if, 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 if you got two people, Brother Page, and uh, you're in a position to hire, okay, well, rather than giving the job to somebody you like and they can't do the job, you, 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 you'd rather give it uh, uh, to, to, a, to a person uh, that, you, that you like rather than a person that you dislike. The person that you dislike, they are well qualified to do the job, but you won't give it to them because you don't like them. But it ain't got nothing to do with it. That's your flesh. It ain't got nothing to do with what you don't, what you don't like. That's the wrong criteria. The reason why we are drowning locally is that we putting all folk around us that's our friends. Hide our kinfolk, and that's the worst thing you can do is to, is, is to hide all your kinfolk around because at, at the end of the day, they're going to kill you. First Corinthians 9.27 says, you, you read it. I ain't got time to read it. Galatians 5, 16, I'm going to read this one. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. There's a young lady, lady in Cleveland uh, who was doing well, one of my clients. She has passed away. She purchased a Rolls Royce and was the owner of the Holiday Inn. Yeah. One of my clients. And uh, I ran into uh, a gentleman that was, in, was uh, instrumental in allowing her to purchase that business. And this is what he said. He, he said the business was making money. She was doing well. 
her, her, her problem and the mistake that she made was hiring all of her kinfolk. Why don't you say amen? amen? And the very folk that you hide all around you, they really jealous because they really want what you got. They don't want to really work for you. That ain't what they working on. They working on trying to figure out how you got what you got so they can take what you got and they be over it. It happens all the time. You go in and you hire somebody in the business. And when you behind your back, they're looking at your books, they're looking at the mail that's coming in, and they're looking at who's showing up and what truck pulling up, and they're writing that name down that's on the side of the truck. Oh, that's where they're getting the supply from, write that down. And then they're looking at the mail, they're looking at that, and, and, and uh, then, then before you know it, they're looking at your list or your roster, all of your customers, all your clients, and they're taking pictures of that and taking pictures of this and taking pictures of that. And then after they get it all together, they down the street across town and they got your folks. Why don't you say amen? Even you got some preachers. Some preachers. Uh, now, now, you, now you know I am, I am generous in terms of giving opportunities to young ministers. I, I, I help them. I declare I will. I, I help them. I, I had to, to finance, to, to support them, to pay them. I do it. Because I believe that when you're working for the Lord, somebody ought to help you. Amen. But you have some people, uh, they come in, and what they're doing, they're trying to build an empire. And once they build up a following, then they'll try to pull out and they'll go start them something with your folks. It happens. It happens in this town. Some of y'all have seen it to happen. But my brother and my sisters, we must know the danger of jealousy. Here's the last scripture, Galatians 2 and 20. But I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. Yes, Why don't you say amen? amen? And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Do you see that? In other words, we can't do it on our own, but we do it what? By faith. By faith in who? The Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Why don't you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm through now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We extend the invitation today. Let us stand.
God, we thank you today for this audience. Thank you for those that worshiped online. And we pray that we will all strive to be more of thee and less of ourselves. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion, and the fellowship of Jesus Christ be with us one and all until we meet again. Let us sing together. Thank you.